Hey everybody, it's Goots, it's Wrestling Pod. I'm your host, Ray Goots. Um, we're here talking about Star K86. Andrew Lee, check out the shirt today. The big boss man. Yeah, he was on yeah. the show tonight. You know, I wasn't I wasn't gonna do this shirt and I forgot I had this shirt, and he's all over this show. He's like in three segments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I was like, you know what? But he's on it. Yeah. I'm gonna wear it for uh big boss man. Um, let me just say this was the show. Before we get into it, this was a show where I decided that all of these guys got what they deserve from Vince McMahon. I don't, you can say like Vince McMahon took advantage of women that work for him. You can say he treated his family like shit. You cannot say that he unjustly ran these people out of business. They got what they deserve. They are so incompetent and useless and stupid. And here's the deal. If Vince McMahon had decided to play by the rules, oh, I will go after Hulk Hogan because Vern Gagne wants him. Oh, I'll just stay in New York because I don't want to upset the Crockett's. Like, if he did all that shit, someone else would have came and drove these fucking losers out of business. They they were incompetent. This is now the fourth Star Kick. Yes. Because right? mm-hmm. Starting three, and they're kind of there's some improvement i I, i'll be honest but they're still making the same mistakes from starcade 83 even four years later you know it's it's they're just they just don't they just don't learn um they dude you know what you know what really got me you know what really fucking annoyed me the video tribute to magnum ta because that's a real story and the video they showed was so bad was so bad. I'm like, this is the best you could put together. Do you know the video Vince would have put for Magnum? Because okay, for those of you who don't know, Magnum TA was supposed to win the belt at this pay per view, and two months before he got into a major car accident that ended his career forever. Mm-hmm. And um, that and they have to turn Nikita Cola face to uh, recover. Main event. What? It's the main event, basically. The main event, but also like to be like the new number one face and people. Mm-hmm. I watched the clip where he turns face and people go ballistic. People go ballistic for him. Um, and they fuck it up with this paper. We'll talk about that in a minute. But so you would think like that's a great story. And oh my God, a video package for that. This video package made me not care this guy got hit by a car. How? how? If you were tuning in for the first time, you probably wouldn't even know anything then about it. By a car. Yeah, because it was a weird. I'll give him the benefit of doubt. It's 1986, so maybe no. But you not used to those kind of video packages. No, back then. no. What's his name? Uh, World class had great video packages in in like 1982, 1983. So they could have they could have hired an editor. I mean, there's music videos on. There's music videos now for five years on MTV. They could have hired someone to make a video. Probably. It's not. But- it's not like this, this, this like hidden art. Like, like I could understand this was like Starcade seventy four. Yes, the Starcade eighty six. I mean, Michael Jackson is revolutionizing music left and right. Come on, they should have got Jackson. But uh, let's get into but it. But that was, Starcade but that was when I decided you, you got what you deserved. You got yeah. what you deserved. Let's get into it. I hated, I, I, I hated this show. I hated this. Show. Um, it was all right. It's the theme is called Night of the Skywalkers. They start mm-hmm. with a laser show. This is the first four hour pay per view I think we're run we're actually watching. And it's you know, taking place in two locations: Greensboro, North mm-hmm. Carolina, and Atlanta, Georgia. Again, Tom Miller, he's an announcer. He introduces us to Tony Schiavone and Rick Stewart, who are going to be the commentators in Atlanta. This is the second one without Gordon Sully. I'm guessing Gordon's not working with his company anymore, right? He's kind of he becomes like Jim Ross is now for AEW. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's not even he's not anywhere near this. So I was like, this is the second one. So we got Bob Cottle and Johnny Weaver at Greensboro. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna go to Greensboro. Our first match: Tim Horner and Nelson Royal, our first cowboy of the night, versus Rocky and Don Carnudo. Don Carnudo's finally he finally has a match. Finally, Starcade. after four fucking uh, super uh, Starcade, this is the classic veteran teaming up with the rookie tag teams. Uh, Don Carnoodle looks like Otis from WWE. He kind of has this Otis look. Uh, the finish comes when Rocky Carnoodle, he reverses an O'Connor roll, but Tim Horner reverses even that 
they showed and he gets the win. So Tim Horner and Nelson Royal wins. But when they showed the replay, they show that Rocky actually pulls Tim Horner into the reverse, but he gets himself pinned. It's stupid looking. Terrible replay they show. What did you think about this first match? This is when um this is my first thing. They, they got the names wrong with the Vic on the when they put the winners, they had Tim they put the Tim Horner's name with the old man and they got the names wrong. On the fucking mm-hmm. graphic. This is when I was first like, you guys are useless. Uh, the match sucked. The match was a waste of time. They don't like a pre-show match almost. They, like they, the, 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 I don't know why the announcers don't spend twenty seconds telling you like a little bit of backstory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't do it for any match. By the way, the commentary I thought in this whole show was really bad. A lot of it was worse than the year before. Talking. What? It was worse than the year before. Yeah, there's lots of moments where nobody's talking, like, mm-hmm. at all. And it's, they got four commentators, dude, four. And nobody is competent. All four are lousy. It's just, you know what, they don't even seem like commentators. They just seem like guys that are watching the show and occasionally say something to one another. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's almost like they didn't know who the wrestlers were sometimes. It just felt like that. Like, Dude, can I also was- tell you, this this show has taken up, like, two days of my life. Like, today I was had a busy day. <laughs> Whenever I had a free moment, I was watching this show. Like, I had to go see Ant-Man. I had to get breakfast with my friend. I had to um, go do the stand. This show is taking up two days of my life. I hate oh, I, I, I hate this show. I hate it so much. Let's go to match number two from Atlanta, Georgia. It's Brad Armstrong versus gorgeous Jimmy Garvin with Precious. Uh, Garvin in this match puts Brad Armstrong in a cover, but Brad a couple of points where he puts him in a cover, but he's holding the trunks and bad Brad Armstrong pointing at the trunks. The ref goes, Hey, knock it off. And he like reverses it. I've never seen that happen, which I actually did like, like, you know, when someone's pointing at trunks, mm-hmm. Hey, he's pulling the trunks and the ref actually sees it. Um, basically what happens is um, both guys are wrestling and it becomes a time limit draw. So nobody wins. These two guys, I thought this was a good match. Except for the bullshit ending, but mm-hmm. these two guys never got like a sh- like a, a shot at WBF when they were in their prime. But they both look good, you know. Well, Jimmy Garvin retires in a few years to become a pilot, which he still is. Apparently, mm-hmm. I believe. Uh, Brad Armstrong was in WCW until it went out of business, and I don't know what I know. He's dead now. He, uh, I looked it up. He actually, after WCW folded, he actually wrestled a few times in WBF. Mm-hmm. And they had him be a commentator for ECW. And then that's he right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. He didn't do that. And then he died like from a heart attack, like pretty much after that. So who knows what would have happened? But he probably would have been I an agent. That... I, I could see he's Road Dog's brother. Yeah. But when I was watching, I was like, this guy looks like a million bucks. He wrestles pretty well. I was like, how come he never went to WB? He was, you know? he was over. They kept like throwing him in st- stupid gimmicks, and then he basically became like a jobber. Like when you get to the Nitro era, he's a jobber, and uh, oh, wow. then they then they force him to become his. They make him copy his brother. I think Vince Russo makes him copy his brother. Oh, like no dog, you mean? Right? Yeah, it's like they kept throwing. Dude, he was Arachna Man. He was the Candy Man. He becomes Roadkill or something or Road. Bu- I think he's he's an MIA. This guy just keeps getting. He looks like a million bucks and he's over. You know what he looks like? He looks like Kenny Omega. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He does. But they and, never, uh, they just, I think he's, you know what? It's sometimes it, it, it's it's better to be a bad worker than to be such a good worker because he was just a good hand. They knew they could just, yeah. anything out of him. Jimmy never Garvin goes was pretty good too, I thought. I he wish this, thing, yeah. Jimmy yeah. Garvin, I liked as a kid. I wish this match had a finish. That's all. Yeah. So I looked it up. He's married to Precious even to this day yeah. now. Yeah. Which is oh, she kind of, she kept yelling. She kind of ruined the match for me. She was like really annoying. Um, She was all right. I thought she played the heel ballet mm-hmm. pretty well. I thought she, she was fine. Um, But uh, I was like looking at it, I was like, oh, I can't believe these guys are married. And it's like one of the few marriages in wrestling that still lasted. So good for them. Good for him. That's why he probably left. He probably been probably like, come on over, I'll get you that before He's wife. like, no way, I'm not losing my wife. <laughs> yeah, probably. Match he made the up. right call. He had, he. I mean, like being an airline pilot's a great job. He made the right call. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's. I guess he left before his body fell apart, right? And he's in the Hall of Fame because he was in the Freebirds. So. Yes, that's right. He was. 
Um, match number three from Greensboro, Hector Guerrero, who's dressed like a Mexican cowboy. And no, Bam not Bandito. Von... He's dressed like a Bandito. That's okay, yeah. There, and he's teaming with Baron Von Rasky from AWA versus Shaska Watley and the Barbarian. This is like the weirdest, just throwing random guys together looking tag teams. Hector Guerrero is in most of this match. Baron Von Rasky, just like he's just sitting on the apron. He's old at this point. Uh, Watley, a, the finish comes when Watley just runs into the uh, turnbuckle, falls down, and Baron Von Rasky drops an elbow for the win. After the match, the heels attack Baron Von Rasky. Hector saves. Um, it was what it is, you know. Hector Guerrero is pretty good. I'll say that. Yeah, yeah, he he was good. It, um, yeah, it was what it was. I, I Pez Watley, his real name is Pe- Pez Watley. I guess he was doing like some evil African gimmick. I don't know. He, um, he looked like a, almost like a like a like a voodoo guy. Like yeah, I think they were trying something. They were trying something like that. Yeah, yeah it's this match. It's just. A lot of these matches just were like whatever. They're just there. You know what they reminded me of? Matches on like AEW Dark. They're just matches, you know? Yeah. They're not and, bad. They're not good. They're just matches, you know? But like this is – I don't – why is this show four hours? You could have cut this first hour out. No. And they didn't tell you like – it's one thing if they were like, hey, listen, like the Barbarian is had up to here with Hector Guerrero, so we have to have a match. Like – but they don't even try to attempt to tell a story. I think they were trying to do like six, making sure there's six matches at both locations. That's why I was so. Funny. I guess. I guess that's probably fair. Yeah, yeah. giving people their money's worth. Better Dude, than the four that Vince gave them. There was ago. this match. In this match, there was like an RSV chant. All right. It sounded like RSV. What does that mean? Like you heard the audience, they're going RSV, RSV. I, like, I don't know. Oh. Okay. Maybe it's an in joke or something. Maybe somebody knows something that we don't know. But well, we right. definitely we don't got- know. Johnny Weaver, he's in Dusty Rhodes dressing room. He's going to try to talk to Dusty. Like, Dusty's like, I don't want to talk to anybody. Another waste of fucking time. This is a stupid segment. Johnny Weaver just stinks as any commentator. He just looks I so... I can't believe he lasted another year. I know, dude. I know. But I he hasn't he gotten like, better. Dude, I thought he was, like, filling in for Gordon for, like, last year because it happened. And then he's back again. I'm like, why is this fucking guy back? He doesn't do anything. Um, match number four from Atlanta, Jordan. Georgia. It is the U.S. tag team match. Russian team, which is Crusher Krusev and Ivan Koloff were the champions versus the Kansas Jayhawks, which is Bobby Jagger and Dutch Mantel. Dutch is fucking hairy. He is like Prince Albert hairy. It's like, it's all over his back everywhere. Um, He's got a whip which they call Shoe Baby and he starts whipping like both the Russians' legs and making them trip and shit. And right in front of the referee, there's no fucking DQ. Crusher Krusev hits Jagger uh, with the chain, with one of the, mm-hmm. the Ivan Koloff's chain, and they win. Um, after the match, the, then the commentators tell us, oh yeah, Shoe Baby and the chain were legal in this match. I'm like, you're telling me this after the fucking thing is, it's just like, you should have told me this the early. They never mentioned that. It's mm-hmm. so stupid. I just thought that was really stupid. That was stupid. Uh, Dude, um, thank God Hulk Hogan started, like, they say Hulk Hogan started the trend of shaving your back because it is just so unpleasant to look at this man's hairy back this entire time. That is so hairy. He it's so, so hairy. hairy. He's, he stinks in the ring, by the way. He He's another guy that, like, he's been a booker everywhere. He's been this. He's, been, he's, a, he's like a failed comic to become. He's like, a, he's like, I could say some names, but I won't. He's basically a failed comedian. I do. I did like him in the uh, the We the People thing. He that was the best thing he's done for me. Yeah, yeah. They just didn't go all the way with it. They 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 got nervous with it. I was surprised nobody was chanting "Shave your back." <laughs> you know, like what he did with Albert, right? Yeah. I was like, how come nobody's chanting this? But it was so fucking hairy. All right, match number five from Greensboro. It's an Indian strap match. We got Rick Rude with Paul Jones, who's now got like a fucking shitty mustache. Versus Wahoo McDaniel. Rude entrance is, they usually, they really were using Sade's uh, Smooth Operator, but yeah. because of copyright, they do it. But I love the beginning of the song because they go like, Ricky Baby. Like, I think this is his WCW about? 90s theme. Yeah, I like that intro. It's great. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, this is the match that is, I think, a turning point in this pay per view because. Starting from this match is where almost everybody starts getting blood. 
The Wahoo McDaniels is bleeding. Okay. Rick Rude is bleeding, which to me makes no sense because how could a leather strap make you bleed? But whatever. Uh, Wahoo McDaniel wins, but afterwards they all attack him. Um, and Hector Garza, uh, Hector Garza, Hector Goro, and Baron Ramirez to make the save. Uh, I gotta say, um, I, I I think Rick Rude should be happy. He he ran into Vince McMahon a year later. So yeah, like he wasn't at. Sarkate before. It's like the first time you're seeing it. This is the first time you're seeing it on a pay-per-view show. Yeah. And uh, when does he go to WWE? Like I think the next summer. The summer of 87. Yeah, he looks he's, like a he's, man, he needs to go. Yeah, because this this wasn't doing it for me. Um, He didn't even win. Uh, yeah. Well, why would you put him over? He's just like the, the, star, the, the star, the next, the big star of the next 10 years. Why would you put yeah, him over? Yeah, because like, Wahoo McDaniel, I get it. He's very popular, but at this point, he's super old already, mm-hmm. right? And you would think this is where the young guy, you know, he puts over the young guys. But I was like, what the fuck? Whatever. For some reason, like, none of the, a lot of these matches just didn't resonate with me. It just was like, it just like, I don't know. Like, it just there was, was no like, connection. there was no, connection. I don't feel a connection. The action's not good. You know, you know what the problem with this, this show had that the 84 Starcade had? The finishes were terrible. It doesn't matter how great the work is, if the finish is god awful. Yeah, I agree. And like a lot of these matches were just generic. Like they were just yeah. very generic. Mm-hmm. They're kind of short. Nothing really happens. You don't know the backstory. There's no connection. Um, but that's the theme of these almost the entire night. You can say um, you listen, you can say what you will about Mr. T Roddy Piper. If you just watch if you just put that show on with no knowledge, WrestleMania two, you know why these guys don't like each other. They establish mm-hmm. it and it doesn't even take that long. It takes them like no. 30 seconds to let you know why they don't like each other. But I think this is where the commentators fail. This is where the whole company fails. Yeah, the I mean, if you're not doing – if you're not going to – okay. If you're not doing the video package, which you could blame on the company, then at least the commentators during this match, mm-hmm. you could talk about it. But there's so many moments where they're just silent. Yeah. They're just like legit silence. They're just watching the show. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like almost like they don't know any of these wrestlers or what's happened. They're just – Oh, look at that! No, hit. they know. It's just that they're not instructed to say anything, to, oh. to tell you. They just there's this we, that, and this is why I don't like it. I don't like about Tony Khan. You can never assume. Don't assume your viewer knows all the facts. Always assume, you, because this thing with wrestling, but they do this in football too. They don't just do just to always like give like background on everything going on. Oh, okay. That's a fair point, but wh- if you're a commentator mm-hmm. on a professional level like this, why do you need direction to say all that stuff? Shouldn't you already know it and be saying this? You should be, but if like Jim Crockett is like, you don't have to say that shit, then you're not going to say it. If your boss is like, don't worry about it, because it just seems like someone told them, don't worry about it. Oh, I just thought they were, well, regardless... They're not doing their job. Let's, you know, that's the whole point. I know, but I mean, like, that, no one's doing their job. You know, so, like, when I, when I, I'll give a perfect example. When I fell out of wrestling, I didn't watch mm-hmm. it from 93 to 97, right? And mm-hmm. then in early 98, I wanted to get back in. So I rented the last WrestleMania, which was WrestleMania 13. And I put it on. And I don't know who Rocky Mavia is. I don't know really who Trip Hunter Hearst Helmsley is. I only knew Steve Austin, a stunning Steve Austin. You know what I mean? And throughout the show, because it was a three-man booth, Vince, Jim, Jim Ross keeps giving background upon background upon background of every fucking thing happening in the match, why the match is there. So by the end of that WrestleMania, again, I'm not, I haven't watched in five years, I felt like I knew a lot about what was going on in the WWF. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, Speaking of commentators, we got this guy, Rick Stewart, one of the commentators. He's yeah. with the Russian team, and they're cutting a promo on Dusty and how they're mad at Dusty because Dusty turned Nikita Koloff to yes. be an American sympathizer. So we finally get a little bit of story. Do you know anything about this Rick Stewart guy? This is my first time seeing it. No, no. I And I know a lot about like some of these uh, WCW guys. I don't know anything about Rick Stewart. Yeah. Well, he stinks at comic I He's know that much about him. I know no, we like no. we like our so, uh, guys. We're going to be much more formative in a few in a few pay per views. Okay, once we get to like eighty eight, we'll know a lot more about these people. Yeah, match number six from Atlanta, Georgia. It is for the Central States Championship. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, 
Cody so you get to like knows. so what happens? Do you lose the belt if you get to the like the eastern states or whatever? Yeah, you can you only wrestle in the central states. I don't I know. Guess. But Cody Khan should make a belt called Central States as well. Uh we got one of my favorite cowboys, Sam Houston, who is a Central States champion, versus Bill Dundee. Mm-hmm. Um once again, Sam Houston selling. It's on point. I love the way this guy fucking sells. Dundee does this really cool like top rope like walking thing and he just fucking jumps attacks him. We get a ref bump, and then um, Sam's boot comes off. So Dundee grabs the boot and attacks um, Sam Houston with the ref sees it, and he calls for a DQ. So Sam Houston wins by DQ. The referee was Scrappy McGowan, who looks he's got like a page boy haircut, which is looked really funny to me. But um, what did you think of this match? Shitty ending. I didn't like the ending. Yeah, again, dude, so many shitty endings in this fucking show. Mm-hmm. I, I get why Dave Meltzer didn't like Dusty Rhodes. I get it watching this show. Yeah. Because these wrestlers are putting are putting a lot of work in, and then the finishes just ruin the match. We're getting a lot of DQs and draws, you know? We, yeah. we are. And I think it's because the philosophy is we got to get you to the next show. But in my mind, this is supposed to be the culmination of your storylines for the year and and they're not culminating anything exactly i thought they were doing a lot of these dqs and draws because they didn't want to make anybody look weak but at by doing that no i think the goal is get you get the people to buy tickets for next month i guess but that's stupid because this is their biggest show you know it it is stupid. well that's why they're out of business yeah it's fucking dumb Mm -hmm. all right now comes probably what could be the worst match on the show. From Greensboro, it's a hair versus hair match. Paul Jones. Not probably is. This is. Uh, this is. Paul this Jones. is the pit. This is the worst one of the show, yeah. Paul Jones with Raging Bull Manny Fernandez, who's now a bad guy, versus Jimmy Valiant with Big Mama. And they bill him from New York City. Um, so... The way this match works, Raging Bull has to be put into like a shark cage and hang from the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's refusing to go in. So he gets into a shoving match with the referee who is Earl Hefner, a young Earl Hefner who still looks fucking old. And then Wahoo, he can't get him in. So Wahoo McDaniel comes out and he fucking chops Raging Bull into the cage. He goes up. Uh, there's brass knuckles being used by Paul Jones. So Jimmy Valiant's bleeding already. Mm-hmm. Um, Jimmy Valiant gets the brass knuckles right in front of the referee and he just fucking hits <laughs> he hits Paul Jones right in front of the referee there's no DQ he uses it to win and then they shave Paul Jones's head um afterwards the the bad guys they attack Jimmy Valiant they DDT him on a chair and then big mommy uh, Felicia Fanning who is Jimmy's wife comes and's like Whoa, what's going on but that's the match what did you I mean I know this is a terrible match, but anything you want to say about this? So, uh, I, uh, you told me, I did your hostel show on Valentine's Day Tuesday, Mm -hmm. and you told me this is a four hour show. And I was like, shit, I got to go home right now and watch it. And I got up to this match, and I had to take two days off to watch (laughs) this match. The moment I saw this jerk off Jimmy Valen dancing in the ring, I got mad, not at you. But at all these fucking, at like Arn Anderson, Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, all these people, um, Dave Meltzer, who said WWE is cartoonish, WWE. I never want to hear anyone talk shit about Coco Beware and Hillbilly Jim ever ever again. What the fuck was this match? This, This match is worse than anything WWE put on the 80s. By not even, this is not even close. It's not even close, bro. He wrestles like he's got a Tourette, Jimmy Valiant. He's horrible. Like, he'll punch you, and he's just like, Ugh. he's like shaking his head. How do you, how do you say NWA was real wrestling, and then put this match on? Yeah, he this. You know, we know what's weird for me too is how over Jimmy Valiant is. People, I mean, he, love this guy. I know, but so was, but that's the thing. There were a lot of guys over in WWF that. And these fucking fans, like, oh, it's so cartoonish and shitty. What? Is, what? Are you going to fucking tell me that this guy has more merit than Brutus Beefcake, than the Honky Tonk Man? Are you out of your fucking mind? This guy was horrendous, bro. And Paul Jones? Paul Jones makes you realize how, how good, like, Slick and Jimmy Hart and Bobby Heenan were. 
Like Paul Jones is just he's pathetic. He's like a former wrestler turn. Yeah, he, he becomes a wrestler again. Okay. I'm gonna you know what? There should be a not a chance in hell Hall of Fame. There should be a ceremony for people that will never be in the Hall of Fame and should be embarrassed that they work in the industry. And Paul Jones would be my first entrant. Like this guy, this guy is is maybe one of the worst managers to ever be on national TV. Um, I think I'm a worst manager. Stokely Hathaway. He's Ooh. worst. Stokely Hathaway. Give him. Malcolm we got to give him time. Yeah, that's true. By the way, Big Mommy, Big Mama, she's got really large breasts, right? So I had to look her up. Believe it or not, this Big Mama, Felicia Fanning, she is actually Jimmy Valiant's wife, mm -hmm. his second wife. And I had to look this up. The story's incredible. This is, this is a quote from him. He went through, this was his second wife, and he went through a really bad divorce with her. And this is what he said. There was a dark time going from one divorce to another. My first wife was so sweet. I did her wrong. I carried a lot of guilt over that. Then I, the same thing with my second wife. I was married 17 years the first time, and then 13 years the second, the second time with Big Mama. That's 30 years. Both marriages ended because of my fault. I don't blame anyone but myself. And this is how it broke up. What broke up the second marriage to Big Mama, he says, was there was a knock on the door at his home in Charlotte, and some lady had filed a $2 million fraternity suit. I had a six-year-old boy I knew nothing about, says Jimmy Valiant. You already had a six-year-old son with Big Mom. So he's got a six-year-old son, and some lady comes and says, this other six-year-old son is your son. So that means he's clearly cheating on her. Mm -hmm. And the children were only three months apart, and the blood test revealed it was his son. So that's what fucking ruined the uh, marriage. And he had to give her, he basically gave, gave her the home, a fleet of five vehicles, and a fucking flower shop business in Charlotte. He had he five was, vehicles? Wow, he must have been a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, he was making a lot of money, yeah. Being he, a completely useless wrestler. Yeah, I can't believe that looking guy was cheating on Big Mama. That was his wife. He's lucky enough he had, and he was cheating on us. Whatever. It's crazy. Now this, um, this, this match was an abomination upon humanity. Yeah. I hate so, it. They start taking intermission now, and Tony Schiavone's talking about the bunkhouse stampede, and he gets Bob Taylor at the Starcade control desk talking it up, and then they show to the to, to hype up bunkhouse stampede. They have Nelson Royal from the first match in full cowboy gear sitting around a campfire talking about the bunkhouse and what a bunkhouse is, and you <laughs> it didn't it. Didn't entice me at all for the bunkhouse. Well, guess what? We're covering a bunkhouse stampede in four weeks. So yeah, but don't you think this was like the worst way to hype up bunkhouse? Some cowboys sitting around a campfire going, yeah. yeah well, they, they were, work. they were, they were focused on the south, and in the south, people like cowboys and shit. I guess you're right. That's probably why there's so many cowboys, right? Yeah, but um, we there was all there was the reason the reason why the Rumble, Rumble was created was to take out the bunkhouse stampede pay per view. Mm -hmm. And we're going to cover uh, the Bunkhouse Stampede in four weeks. The 1988. There's only, there was only one Bunkhouse pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. They Bob Taylor also recaps the Jim Crockett Senior Memorial Cup, the tag team tournament. This was a long happened, recap. Yeah. It happened in New Orleans. LOD, I mean, not only. The Royal Royals win, and they're using this to hype up the next one, uh, the next tournament that's coming up. Um, are we covering that? Because that one looks No, tiny. that's not a pay-per-view. Ah, okay. All right. Match I number think, eight. like, um, the finals are at Great American Bash 88 for that year, but I could be wrong. Okay. No, but this was taking place in 87, the next one. Yes. They, they, so, the Great American Bash 87 came out on VHS, but it wasn't a pay-per-view, so we were... No, it wasn't. It, it was, and like... we don't have it. We And we don't... So I, I rented the Great American... That was a good show, because that was the first War Games. I rented that, mm -hmm. and it was a good show. Um, but we're not covering it, so. All right. Match number eight from Atlanta, Georgia. It's a Louisville street fight. We got Jimmy Garvin versus Big Bubba. I mean, Ron Garvin, Ron Garvin. Ron Garvin, sorry. Ron Garvin versus uh, Big Bubba Rogers with Jim Cornette. There is a point where Jim Cornette gives uh, Bubba Rogers a roll of nickels, 
and he hits Garvin with it. Garvin's bleeding. There's a ref bump. There's a pile driver. And I mean, Garvin hits a pile driver. And it's like you got to get up in the 10 count, basically, right? Mm-hmm. And he gets up with his refs down. So he gets hit in the head with a racket by Jim Cornette. Um, and he goes down. But why do you need to do this behind the ref's back? It's a street fight. They keep saying anything goes. Why do you have to, why do, you have to do a ref bump for this? This is I making it. Anyways, Jim Cornette takes a bump. Jimmy Garvin gets up. Uh, Ron Garvin gets up first. But Bubba, Ra- uh, Bubba Rogers distracts the referee, allows Jim Cornette to hit Garvin in the leg with the racket. So Garvin goes down. Ref says Bubba Rogers got up first, so Bubba Rogers wins. Uh, what did you think of this Louisville street fight? It was uh, this was actually I thought a hard hitting uh, match between. I, I I I didn't hate this match. You know, so when Jim Cornette walked, because the last match was Paul Jones. When Jim Cornette just walks down the aisle, you're like, oh yeah, this guy, this guy, this guy has it. Like this guy just has it just by walking. You could just tell. Like I saw, I said that two weeks ago, but you could just tell this guy has it compared to that fucking loser, Paul Jones. This was actually a hard hitting match. I didn't mind this match. I yeah, I liked it more than I thought I was gonna like. I didn't like the logic behind it because it's yeah, a street fight. but these and two were like really it. again. It was a shitty finish. Yeah, and it yeah, but it was like that takes me out of a match when things don't make sense. But yeah. I can't say it was a terrible match either. That's reserved for Jimmy it was now. better than. <laughs> Jimmy if you, if you told me you want to watch Big Boss Man versus Ron Garvin, I'd be like, no. But this was better than it had it had it had a right to be. Yeah, that's true. Fair. All right, match number nine from Greensboro. It is for the World TV title. It's first blood match, so you know it's going to have blood as well. Tully Blanchard with JJ Dillon versus Dusty Rhodes, who's the champion. Dusty does the whole. Goldberg thing walks out of the dressing room. They follow him. He's got Tully written on this fucking side of his head. Oh, I hated that. That took me I out of the match. I fucking hated that. So Dusty Rhodes got short, short blonde hair, right? And he's got with black ink Tully written on both sides of his like where his sideburns supposed to be. Um, they try to do this comedy stuff where JJ Dillon first tries to put headgear on Tully and then tries to rub Vaseline on him, and Earl Hefner is not having it. And Tully and Earl Hebner get into a shoving match. I feel like Earl Hebner is like the original Audrey Edwards. He's yeah. got to constantly be involved in these shoving matches. It's so fucking stupid. Anyways, Dusty attacks JJ, who starts bleeding. There's, a, there's like two ref bumps. Tully starts bleeding. But because there's a ref bump, JJ cleans up his blood. And he gives him another roll of nickels. To Dusty Road, Dusty he who I mean to uh, Tully who hits Dusty. Dusty's bleeding. The ref sees Dusty bleeding, but not Tully because Tully was cleaned up. So Tully wins. He is now the world TV champion. Thoughts? Woo! You know, it's just overbooked. It's just let these guys. Mm. And again, it's Dusty Rhodes doing it to himself. Just let these guys. Tully Blanchard proved the last two Starcades. Just let him go. Let him fucking work, man. Let him. And there's just too much bullshit. And the match is short. And it sucked. It sucked. Yeah. It you're, fucking you're sucked. Right. We've seen that Tully can go. We all know Dusty can go. If they just had a regular match, I think it would have been way better. Or but like, or just... like a brawl, like in a cage. And then it's just like, why do you have to do? Like cleaning up the blood. It's just so yeah. much convoluted bullshit. There's too much business happening. You're right. Absolutely. It just, you want to maybe do that for like a Jimmy Valiant match because it covers up the fact that he's a terrible wrestler. But these guys are good wrestlers. Why don't you just have a fucking regular match? Exactly. I agree. It wasn't, yeah. it was, uh, it was, it was bad. And again, like Dusty, this was a, Dusty's booking like just really bad finishes left and right. right every fucking match. You know what was the worst too is because I was expecting a lot because I saw Tully versus Dusty. I, I yeah, and I see other matches of theirs that are good. Yeah, so my hopes were high, and then when this happened, I was like, dude, what the fuck was this? It's stupid. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we go to match number ten. We're just breezing through this guy <laughs> from Atlanta, Georgia. This is the Skywalker match. What that oh. is, it's there's. A scaffolding above the ring, that's 25 feet above the ring. We got the Midnight Express with Jim Cornette versus the World Warriors with Paul Ellering. The fucking Midnight Express come out first. They're sitting in the ring. 
the Road Warriors come and they immediately go up to the top. And there's this long pause where they're just up there in the top and Midnight Express is just down at the bottom and nobody's doing anything because they're just like, what do we have? Do we, are we going to have to go up or are they going to come down? They're just, just, you never read um, Mick Foley's bio about the Hell in the Cell match with Undertaker and how like he went up to the, uh, cat, uh, mankind goes to the cage, top of the cage right away. And he was worried. He was like, man, if Undertaker sees me and he just goes into the ring, I'm going to look like a fucking idiot because I have to climb back down. Mm. <laughs> but thankfully, Undertaker climbed up too. I was half expecting the Road Warriors to climb back down because Midnight Express weren't going up. Finally, they do, uh, after waiting around for a while, Midnight Express goes up. The fucking scaffolding is so flimsy. Pipes are fucking breaking up as soon as you touch it. It looks so dangerous. Both Midnight Express throw powder into the Road Warriors' eyes. Uh, this is really cool spot where Bobby Eaton's like swinging and he swings to like one of the sides of the scaffolding and he just holds onto the rugs. The Midnight Express are bleeding. They do this, the finish comes, they do this monkey bar spot where everybody's like kind of hanging on the underneath of the scaffolding. The Midnight Express drop, so the Road Warriors win. Cornette gets chased up to the top by Paul Ellering. And then he fucking falls <laughs> and he fucking hurts his he destroys <laughs> his knee. You know they he's still in pain. Right? He's still in pain to this day. He so if you guys watch this, the way he lands mm -hmm. is he lands feet first. And what that does is it jacks up his fucking knees. Did you do you listen? You, can you hear him? Do you hear him saying my knee, my knee? Like yeah, he yeah. Does, he's like not he's not acting. He goes to like Bubba Rogers and he's like, carry me, carry yeah. me. <laughs> But like, he, but you can tell. There's a point where he shoves, he puts his face in the ground, and I think he knows. Like, I can't. I I think he's supposed to sell like a cartoon character, and then he's in so much pain. He's like, I gotta just scream and yell into the mat because it's like, dude, it was a stupid bum to take. Number, I don't one. know why they thought to do that to him. This is why this okay. This is the reason why I don't like Jim Cornette because Jim Cornette, whenever he's criticizing AEW. He's mm -hmm. always saying, it, don't take people who don't know what they're doing in situations that they don't know what they're doing, right? It's dangerous. They've constantly said in pre, like interviews afterwards how Bubba Rogers is very green by the time of this match. He's so new. So why are you putting him in a position where he has to catch it? Well, I think so that's cool. why Jim Cornette gets mad up because he was put in a position. He was uh, put in a position and it permanently affected his life. It, he's um, he, he this he, I, he's still being affected by this bump and it's yeah, going to be forty years. It's going to be forty years later in three years. Yeah. So I think that's why you know he's like when Kenny Omega wrestles a kid. If you do something wrong to that kid, that kid's going to have pain the rest of his life. So I, because yeah, he I think they they made him. I don't think it was his idea. I think they made him, and um, he did it wrong, and he's had to suffer. So. What did you actually think of the match? I hated it. The, they can't do any moves. The thing is so fucking yeah, crazy. It's, this is like this. These are two of the best teams of all time. You, they could have. I mean, there's so many different ways, you, so many different gimmicks that they could have. Just street fight, falls count anywhere, dog collar match, uh, um, cage match, uh, fucking lumberjack match. There's so many different stupid gimmicks you can give these guys. And I don't know why they kept doing this match. Because they do it a few more times in WCW. Yeah. It never works. It it they they marketed the whole show around this fucking match. Yeah, it's called Night of the Skywalkers. Yeah. And it's and like, even as a it's horrible. It's just it's such a dumb idea. The only thing this is actually if you watch it, it's not a good match, but the only thing that keeps you in suspense is that you know it's a very dangerous situation that's exactly. the only thing but nothing happens it's just a bunch of people like throwing punches and then laying flat on because there's button. nothing yeah. because they're, they're not like you could have darby allen and um jeff hardy up there they're not going to do crazy moves because one thing goes wrong they're gonna they're gonna be dead yeah there's no way to kind of like it's so narrow it's not even like wide enough for you to do anything, and it's yeah. so rickety. It looks terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. I'm surprised nobody ever sued 
for this fucking match. Like, I mean, if they do it multiple times, well, got because to they're all marks. I mean, Jim Cornette probably could have sued, and he didn't. And uh, look where he is. Yeah. Bob Taylor, uh, back at the control decks, uh, he recaps Great American Bash 85 and 86. Remember, this was a tour at the time. It wasn't an actual pay per view. Yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a show. They make it, they make it a pay per view in 88. So. Yeah, there even is like a musical act. In, at these tours, like a, some, like an actual country singer sings for like an hour, and then they roll the credits of everybody who oh. produced. Why did they oh. do this? Yeah, I think they set up the cage. There's two. Oh, that's right. Because but like the, that makes it sense. is that just sense. it is just death. It is death for a yeah, show. So they go like, "Here's everybody produced." I thought it was over. I was like, "Wait, is this ending?" No way. It was like. It's so weird, but actually that makes sense. They do it because of the credits, you're right. I mean, the cage. They got to put up the cage. They right? did that, that in Star Kane 83 as well. Yeah, that makes sense. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better... I mean, I think they do. Well, do what would you do if you had to put up the cage? You know I, would, what? Do what I, would, I would have interviews. No, do what WWE did. Remember when they had to put up the cage? They had Hogan's video. Yeah. Hogan's Why can't you interview yeah. Ric Flair? Why can't you interview Nikita Koloff? Why can't you interview Dusty? Why can't you interview fucking... Uh, Paul Jones. I mean, why just have interviews. You, why couldn't you show Magnum TA's terrible fucking music video during this time? <laughs> right? I know. Yeah. That's, uh, all right, let's go to match number 11 from Greensboro. It is the steel cage match for the Tag Team Championship. It is uh, Arn and Ole Anderson versus the Rock and Roll Express who are the champions. Ricky's in there selling a lot. He's getting the work done on him. He's bleeding. He's the only guy who's going to be bleeding this match. They're working on Ricky, working on Ricky, and the entire audience is waiting for this hot tag to happen. They're just like, you've got to make this tag to Robert Gibson. He's got to make this tag. The tag never comes. Robert Gibson just comes into the match, and all four men are just in the fucking ring fighting. Referee's allowing it. And um, basically, Ole picks up Ricky to fucking body slam him, but Gibson drop kicks him so Ricky falls on top of Ole and they cover and they win after the Rock and Roll Express win. The and Anderson they're shipping beating, him. beating him, they're beating him up. This was disappointing, I thought. Even though it wasn't a bad match, it was a little disappointing. I thought this was the best match on the show. And that's not saying much. The action was good. I thought the work, be, the uh, every man, every man, all the work was good. Arn, yeah, I would say that the selling that Arn did was good. Ricky selling was good. Uh, the finish also, like the finish was weird, but it was the one time on this fucking show they gave the fans what they wanted. I thought the Rock and Roll Express looked really bad in this match because no, I they think they looked good. Hardly got I think. Enough. Well, the whole thing, the whole reason why they were popular is that they would take get the shit beat out of them the whole match, but then they would pull it off. And that's the way they pulled it off. It's like, it's like, we're not, see, like, we're not trying to have a great match to steal the show. We just want to win and get the fuck out of here. And I, okay. I like that. It's because, yeah, they're not like, we're the show stealers. Or we're the hell, like, we're, no, we're going to get five stars from Dave Meltzer. It's like That's exactly what it was. It was like we were getting our ass kicked and we somehow steal the victory. Yeah, that's exactly And we're just yeah. going to go home. We, we, yeah. we, we're, we're still champions. Let's get the fuck out of here. Like I will agree this was probably the best match on the show, but it was still nothing to write home of, you know? No, no. It, yes, nothing it was to write home, write home to Vince and be like, please sign me. I need to get out of this company. Yeah. All right, our final match from Atlanta, Georgia. Is for the NWA World Championship. Ric Flair was a champion versus Nikita Koloff. Flair does his entrance. He comes in, and all of a sudden, he's in the ring. All of a sudden, the, it fucking fuzzes out, and it turns into this beach music video. And I was like, I first I was like, what happened? I didn't know they. I thought someone they, taped over the footage. Yeah, you have to understand. The commentators do not mention. We want to show you guys a video. None of that. There's just silence. <laughs> Flair. And it cuts into the beach music video. I legit thought somebody, yeah, recorded over it. I was, I had to stop it and go back and see, like, if this is part of it, it go forward. And it's basically a music video for Magnum TA. They show him just running around the beach, and they keep showing this short-haired lady. I didn't know if it was his mom, yeah, or his wife. Who? I think, I think it's wife? his wife. She looks. She like looks much I know he older. leaves her. I know he leaves her. He gets with Tully's wife. Oh, she looks much older than. I really thought it was his mom. Yeah. Well, no, but they and, lean in. I mean, it could be his mom. I don't know. 
Dude, this video so, is so bad. This music video, guys. There's music playing, but there's no information that this guy was injured. There's no, no information. It's just him running happened. on the beach. It's just him running on the beach. So if you just if you're first time tuning in, you just think this guy is a piece of shit because he's clearly healthy enough to run on a beach, but he's really not willing to wrestle. He's a piece of shit. Dude, didn't he look healthy? I was like, so is he healthy? I didn't. Yeah, no, no, this was an old video, and oh. I, I think this was this was no. He's still in the hospital when this is all. Happening. Oh, when this was happening. It's a weird fucking. This is weird. I, I mean, the, the whole thing, Nikita, which they don't. I, I, Nikita is like, I, I, you know, because him, him and Magnum. So basically, him and Mag. This is what it's like, and this okay. is him and Magnum were feuding, right? Magnum, but it's supposed to. They're going to end the feud. The Magnum was going to get the belt from Ric Flair, and then Magnum got injured, and then Dusty Rhodes didn't have a partner, and and then Dusty Rhodes comes out with Nikita Koloff, and then Nikita says, I. You know, even though me and Magnum TA hate each other, I respect him and I'm gonna and I'm so inspired by his bravery and his accident, I'm gonna fight now for good and I'm gonna fight against you horsemen for Magnum, right? It's kind mm. of clearly like Sami Zayn died and then Roman Reigns next week is a good guy. Oh, okay. Because like, you know what, I'm so inspired by Sami Zayn, I, I I'm gonna be good now. Like, so that's kind of what it is. So it was a great storyline. And then they fucking ruined it with this finish. They fucking. I ruined. don't think Nikita was as over as everyone says he is because when he's coming out, there's a loud dusty chant, and when they introduce Nikita, you can actually hear some boobs. You can really. Well, hear he was boobs. he was over when he first turned, but they rushed. Yeah, he's, he's not over in this match, by the way. He's not. He really is. Okay. He, the crowd's not fully behind him. Yeah, I he, mean, when, way, when he turn, I mean, he does become like a huge star, like in '87. But I believe that. I believe yeah, that. I but, think it. Well, you know, and I understand. Like they're they're in, they were kind of in a no win situation because um, yeah. because it happened so close to the. It happened. Yeah, I mean, uh, he gets in the crocs. I think in October, November, and this yeah. shows in November. Um. So Nikita's the U.S. champion. They show the belt, and when this match happens, it is basically Ric Flair selling majority of this match. The first part of this, there's see, two parts of this match. What are you going to say? Do you see Nikita's penis fall out? No, I got to watch that again. His penis falls out? His penis comes out. You can see it. And Tommy beginning? Young puts it back in. Oh, I got to I gotta watch. I got to watch that again. He's fucking like, cocked. Like, uh, Ric Flair picks him up in a suplex and drops him, and his penis falls out. Oh, well, oh, because there, there is that suplex spot. So... Rick, there's two parts of this match. The first half of the match is Ric Flair just getting his ass kicked. Mm -hmm. Everything he hit, Ric Flair doesn't even do that much offense. He he hits him with three chops, then Nikita no sells. Then Ric Flair hits one vertical suplex, then Nikita no sells. So Ric Flair is just like begging him off. He's like, whoa, 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 time out, time out. And then finally, what happens is Nikita tries to go for the clothesline. He goes over the top rope, hurts his leg, left leg. And then Flair is out working on the left leg in the second half of the match. He throws him into the scaffolding. Nikita blades. He's bleeding. Ric Flair gets into the staff, uh, scaffolding. He's bleeding. There's a ref bump on the referee, Tommy Young. He goes down. And then they're wrestling. And then Scrappy McGowan comes in. He gets fucking, he takes a ref bump as well. Two ref bumps. And then... Tommy Young gets back up, but Nikita keeps pushing him, so he calls for a DQ. Double DQ. Nobody fucking wins. Everybody starts coming in. Nikita starts fucking beating up everybody. They do a pull apart. That's the ending. Oh. This, by the way, another stinker for Ric Flair. Um, you know what it is? I was watching this. Ric Flair's performance is good. But I noticed that he keeps getting booked into these shitty, like finished and matches. Yes, yeah. These these but, are the... so this I is the second like the second DQ match we've seen from him in like Starcade, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Look, I would have, I would have had Nikita win this match because whether they're booing him at the arena, finish this story, finish the story that you start. Don't. It, it, I agree. You should have had Nikita win instead of this bullshit, you know? Yeah. And also, like, Nikita, I think, could have been... You know, there was talk. There was a rumor after WrestleMania 3 
Vince wanted to get Nikita and have WrestleMania 4 just be Hogan versus Nikita. Okay, here's the thing with Nikita. This is my opinion. I don't think he had it. He and didn't. He ultimately he, didn't. Yeah. When he, so he's supposed to be like at this point in this match, their Hulk Hogan, right? Because he hulks up a whole bunch of times, right? He's, Where he's uh, yes, he's gonna, he's gonna Magnum up. PA was gonna be, he, they're now like he's gonna be Hulk Hogan. Yeah. But the difference between Hogan and him is that when Hogan would hulk up, he would have so much emotion showing in his face. Nikita was the opposite. When he was hulking up, he had this dumb, fucking emotionless look on his I face. I think he's, but I think he's supposed to be like a Russian killing machine. Like, like Drago is a good just, guy. To me, it just looked like he's like his mouth is like half open. Mm. It's like it just looked really dumb to me. I was like, "That's your hulking up, dude!" Like that's your like. Ugh. It's just like it didn't look in, intimidating at all. Just, it was a it was a bad match. It wasn't a good match. Yeah, it was thought, a bad match. The finish, like you know, you're watching this match. There's no drama because you know the finish is going to be kind of. She's just waiting for the shitty finish, and then it hits, and the Rick, show just ends like with like a wet fart it's yeah like... rick flair might be like not a good person but i would say he carried this match 100 percent carried this match his selling was you no know, really he did good. i mean obviously yeah. between these two guys but still wasn't good still, no it still wasn't but, as good as hulk hogan versus king kong bundy no but i don't blame that on rick flair because it's the booking the, the, yeah, the books I, I, and stuff I know the yeah the I think I don't also blame Nikita because I think the ending should have been Nikita gets the belt and then take it from there. But I would say just finish the story you started. Don't yes, leave the fans home happy. Make them go home happy. You could. Have I think people people would have popped for him winning. Yeah, and then they would have taken always, him seriously. You could always take the belt off him like a month later. But at, at Starcade, where this guy is doing this for the honor of. Magnum TA, who's who's fucking on life support or whatever, you have him win, absolutely. But it was just so stupid. I can't believe when I saw this, I was like, I can't believe people thought Dusty was a good book. You know, like I can't I mean, believe it, he the eighty five um, Starcade was booked really well. This and but this and the eighty four Starcade are booked like pure fucking garbage. Yeah, I don't yeah. understand why he fit. Why he booked so many awful finishes? Yeah, There's so many awful, so That's many what like. I'm it makes me. I was like, how is this guy that good? He just keeps booking these shitty finishes. You know. You know what it is. You know what it is. It's like you watch these really long matches, and then the finish. That the, it doesn't just leave you unfulfilled. It pisses you off that you waste your time watching this. Yeah, and I just yeah. watch these two guys wrestle for fourteen minutes. If you were going to do that, mm-hmm. you had the match. You know, you should have the match be two minutes long if this was the fucking finish. It's both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like Vince Russo shit. But like they're not gonna ever say that about Dusty. They're gonna just it was fucking all it, this show sucked, man. It really sucked. And the work was there. There were so many good workers. I mean, Tully Blatchard, Arn Anderson, Ric Flair. But the finishes just stunk. They stunk. So I've been doing a count. Seven out of the 12 matches had blood in it. Mm-hmm. There was at least six ref bumps or an incompetent referee. And there were five Cowboys on this fucking show. This is just just too much, guys. You got to bring these numbers. You know what I think, you know what I think you know? threw me off was learning. I, I, if I had known it was four hours, first of all, the laptop was broken. Mm-hmm. Still kind of broken over recording. Um, but the fact that it was four hours got me mad before I put it on. Because I'm like, I know that extra hour doesn't mean the show's going to be an hour. Like, like they're, oh, it's going to be better. It's like, no, 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 no. This show's going to be worse. By the way. going to make it worse. Yeah, the extra hour will make it worse. Yeah. By the way, I checked Starcade 87's runtime. Because I remember liking Starcade 87 as a kid. And it's only two and a half hours. Thank God. Thank God. So. Is that the next um, one we're reviewing? No, 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 no. So let's give you let's give you and the listeners a preview of the next four weeks. Next week we're doing WrestleMania three, where things. Can you believe? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just talk about that in a second. Then in two weeks we're doing Starcade eighty seven, where the main event is Ron Garvin versus Ric Flair. Then, two, three weeks from now, at the same night as Starcade eighty seven, is the first Survivor Series: Team Hogan versus Team Andre. Then in a month we're doing. 
the 1988 Bunkhouse Stampede, uh, NWA pay-per-view in Long Island, New York, where they do the Bunkhouse Stampede. And then in five weeks, the same night as Bunkhouse Stampede, the first Royal Rumble. So a couple of interesting shows going on the way. Can you can you believe by the way, watching this show in like four months there's WrestleMania three? It's just surprising how at this point there's already been two WrestleManias, right? Mm-hmm. And they're still like not looking at what's happening. They're not even attempting to like copy. Yeah, yeah. And they're just like I'm not saying you gotta I'm not saying you gotta copy WWE. That's what I'm trying but to say. But you gotta like take a cue. A couple yeah, of cues yeah. from his playbook. You look at what they're doing and you say, we got to kind of step it up as well. We can't be doing these fucking cowboy gimmicks and we can't no, be they... doing blood everybody. You would think, like, okay, WrestleMania 2 is a great example. There was only blood, like, I think in two matches or something, right? So yeah. when... And one was the main was, event. Yeah, one was the main event and it made sense because Steve Steel Cage, but when you're fucking seeing it happen... From the fifth match on, you're just like, by the time Ric Flair and Nikita get it, it's almost like you don't care at all. It has no effect at all. It's so stupid. It was like, how are you not watching WrestleMania 1 and 2 and saying, like, some of the stuff they're doing right, we should be doing. How do you not do that, you know? Yeah, and then then how do you, you know, like Arn Anderson and Ric Flair, you know, they blame. So they take, so Starcade 87 is in Chicago, right? And they mm-hmm. put on pay per view, and Vince goes no, 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 and puts his own pay per view Survivor Series and tells cable companies, "If you carry Star eighty seven, we'll give you WrestleMania four, right?" Mm-hmm. So it's only shown in like in like ten percent of the country Star eighty seven, and Greensboro gets pissed, and Arn and Rick have, and I think even Tony Schiavone have said, "If they didn't move Star eighty seven, we'd still be in business." No, you're a bunch of fucking idiots. Because Starcade '87 is actually a pretty good show. Uh, if I, maybe I'm wrong when I rewatch it, these shows were bad. These shows were bad. They're poorly produced. Their finishes are terrible. Um, they make you actively not want to support the company. You yes. guys were fucked. You guys were fucked. Whether Vince did Survivor Series the same night as Starcade '87 or not, I don't care. You can rationalize it all you want. You can make excuses all you want. These shows were not good. Ric Flair, your main event matches were not good. This was this was shit. And you are going right. under whether you like it or not. We've Give seen pro- four Starcades so far. And mm-hmm. now my opinion of when I think Starcade, I actually think really poor quality pay-per-view. So that's just my take on them. That's how I feel. It's just they just aren't good. They don't, they don't. I can't 85 believe 85 was good. 85 was good. I like yeah. that. Nah, it was all right. It was okay. It was it was better than the the, the other three. I'll tell you that much. Low, low, uh, low. Fucking- yeah, but like this was supposed to be. You know, I heard for years, like, cause I, cause you couldn't see Starcade eighty three to eighty six. They this, they, you know, these are the WrestleManias. This is WrestleMania. and then you watched them. It was like, no, this is just, this is just the show. That, this is like, this is you just put on a you just put on a big show, but there's nothing about this that is like WrestleMania. It's you can't tell like, me. It's almost like comparing WrestleMania to uh, what's, Bound for Glory. What's Impact Wrestling? Yeah, Bound for Bound Glory. For Glory. That's what it's like. That's what but it's at like. least, like, here's the deal. At least TNA books Bound for Glory to kind of culminate storylines. You may not like the storylines, but at least they do that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, but that's what it legit felt like it was comparing. It was like yes. the, their quality, WrestleMania quality is here. Starcade's like it's like it's down. It's down. It's down. <laughs> yeah. And um yeah, man, it's this was a rough watch. And it, it got it, it was rough. It was a rough, it was a long this is dot I, I, I didn't have any free time today because I was kept every time I had a busy day and I had to keep going back to the show. And I wish I, I feel like if I knew I would have started watching the show last week. If I knew it was four hours. This that extra like, hour. This is like an ing- uh, unenjoyable way of watching this one. You know, it's just like it's, if yeah, it was it's good, just if it was a good show, you wouldn't have minded that you're watching four hours. But the fact that it's bad is just like But even oh, if it's bad, if it's three hours, that's fine. I can handle bad yeah. three hours. But a bad four hours? Ugh. Yeah. But yeah, you know what though? But like so there's there's a lot of bad four hour WWE pay per views, like way in the future, way, way, way. Talking like you know 2016, 2017, but I'm ready for those. I have it. Like when we 
if we get up to WrestleMania 32, which is like six hours long, I'm ready. Like I'll be mentally ready. Like I yeah. know it's coming. It's not going to be fun to rewatch, but I know it's coming. I didn't know this was coming. And this was just like, this was just torture. And at the end, I was like, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad Vince, I'm glad Vince was so vicious towards them. I'm glad. They deserve it. Yeah, he, you made a good point. You said something to me. You wrote a text message to me. You said, I don't think Vince was so much of a genius as these guys Yeah, common sense. Yeah, yeah, he just had common sense. And Mm -hmm. it's not that Vince was a genius. It was just that his opponents were a complete moron. That's yeah. what it was. Well, he he's in he's in the microphone and be like, okay, explain why Randy Savage and Ricky Steve hate each other. Well, you know, Jesse, you know, just common sense, which they're not doing on the other channel. It, I, you know, they're not doing that. They're just having two guys who hate each other come out and they're sitting there in silence and they're like, Dusty Rose with a headlock. Like that, that's it. Like, like he just had common sense. He just said, We should tell the audience why these guys don't like each other. We should have music for the guys. We you know should it, establish it characters like, that are easily. It, it felt like they were doing what they were always doing. Like that's how the, I try to picture the NWA always was like mm-hmm. when what they should have been doing was trying to improve and evolve. But it mm-hmm. was like, we don't want to evolve. We just want to keep doing what we're doing. And that's ultimately, I think, what took them out of business. I mean, the, w, the WWE guys had T-shirts. Whether you were fucking um, Hulk Hogan or or the Killer Bees, they had T-shirts on sales. They had action figures. They had so much going on, and these guys have nothing going on. They're not even attempting. They're just doing what they're doing until the wheels fell off, and um, Ted Turner had to bail them out. And yeah. I mean, I listened to what Jim Hurd had to say. The changes he wanted to implement. He wasn't wrong. I, I say this all the time, and then when we get. They, these guys always have like Jim Hurd was an idiot or a scumbag. He wasn't wrong. This formula you had was going nowhere. Yeah. It was going nowhere. And he wanted, he wanted, you know, in 1990, he wanted Randy Savage to jump over and he wanted, he goes, I want Randy Savage because I wanted to get like uh, more merchandising deals. I wanted to get more involved with like help with the ch- getting children to watch. And, and I was gonna like have D push people like Ric Flair and shit. And that's a smart business move. Basically, yeah, take some of Vince's share. Instead, they're just shut and... instead it was same old, same old. Same you old, know? same old. I mean, mm-hmm. even Bischoff like goes like, you know, you guys didn't remember Bischoff Bischoff tried to say like kids didn't watch WCW. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And if you made a little if you made the thing a little bit more kid friendly, if you made things you would have had me as a – it's just the company – I watched it as a kid, yeah. And yeah. If they, if they had if – They're so lucky know, they got Hogan. They're so lucky yeah. they had that six years. You know, they really fucked Hogan on the way out, and they sh- they can go fuck themselves. They're so lucky that they had Hogan. They're yeah. so lucky that Hogan jumped when he did. And by the way, I was watching WCW before the whole NWA. Like, you know, I before saw – NWO. NWO. Yeah, NWO, yeah. So it was, I was watching it. I just always thought, like, it was subpar. I always felt that way, you know? Yeah, it's just... But it could be good. That's the thing. It could be it could good. good. There, was, could... Dude, there was some stuff they did, even when mm-hmm. I was a like, kid, I was a big fan of, like, when Cactus Jack got powerbombed on the concrete. Well, I thought that was huge. Well, I was like, oh, my well, God. You let's know? see what happens when we get to those. Let, let's not yeah. shit on them, because we haven't watched them yet, like, now. Mm-hmm. But we get like up to eighty six. It's like this whole show could have been not just good but great. The talents there, the stories were there. Talents there, absolutely, yeah. And then Anyways, just, that's okay. Star Kid eighty six. Don't watch it. Don't watch Star Kid eighty six unless you like are like in love with Nikita Cole. If he wants to get penis. Yeah. No, even if yeah, that's the only reason why. Yeah. It's like oh, his penis, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe on iTunes. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Ray Goots. Follow the podcast, uh, Ray Goots. Uh, I'm going Goots Wrestling on Instagram. Uh, there was going to be a wrestling comedy show, but it's not happening anymore. So uh, yeah, oh, I know I'm so sad. Um, but hey, next week, I- I'm so excited for this one. This is going to be a good one. We're gonna have a lot to talk about next week. WrestleMania yeah, three, three, the third WrestleMania. The third one. I gotta say, I do think 
now watching all these shows in a row, including Star Arcades, I, I I always knew this, but now how important and how special Randy Savage, Ricky Steamboat was. That was really like the, and we're going to talk about it more next week. Mm-hmm. But that was, you know how Vince goes, we, I, we make movies. That was a movie. That was like an epic that nobody, nobody came close to doing until those two did it. Yeah. Every, it's now, now it's never been more apparent than after watching these fucking garbage shows, how good this damage was. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week for WrestleMania three. Until then, uh, Andrew Lee, bro. We'll talk. Have a good night. Night, guys.